I made a new channel, Aviation Station, link down below. Deep under the ocean lurks a hidden terror, a submarine that the world has never seen. Its team of nine receives its orders, a military base deep within enemy territory. The nuclear reactor spurs to life, sucking in seawater and instantly vaporizing it into a steam trail. The submarine rises to the surface, but doesn't slow down, breaching at a colossal speed with a roar that's heard leagues away. Igniting its ramjet, the submarine, now the fastest plane in the Air Force, increases beyond Mach 3. Approaching its target, it strikes with a fury not seen outside the atomic age before vanishing, back under the ocean and undetected. This insane concept is the culmination of submarine research and ramjet technology to build the ultimate nuclear deterrent. This is the terror of the seas, the unknown enemy, and fortunately, the never-built Convair submersible nuclear ramjet, or as I like to call it, the flying submarine. The year is 1961. USA needs an edge against the Soviets. They turn to military supplier Convair, whom at the time was looking into various applications of nuclear technology in aircraft for the US Navy. They had already proposed the very imaginative submersible seaplane submarine hunter and naturally had the imagination to think outside of the box. The engineers had so far thought up unmanned nuclear VTOL drones, aircraft carrier launch Mark III strike craft, both projects that desperately need a future video, as well as giant nuclear seaplanes, just like the Lockheed flying nuclear tub that I put up last week that you can watch right here. But the US Navy wasn't satisfied. They needed something that had the deterrent capacity of a submarine, but would also be able to reach inland targets far from the ocean. After all, if you've ever seen a map of the world, much of the territory of Russia is very far from the sea, and missiles used in the era lacked the flexibility of a manned aircraft. So they needed a craft that could approach enemy territory without its presence being known, and then strike quickly. This is what the team at Convair came up with. This top secret black project would be called the Submersible Nuclear Ramjet, and it would be unlike any other aircraft design of that era, and would resemble more of a manned nuclear missile than anything. It would have a long sleek design with a diameter of 8 feet, as well as being 180 feet in length. With two fuel tanks, one at the front and one at the back, with four different exhaust areas at the rear. The ramjet would be powered by a nuclear reactor, most likely heavily shielded in the middle of the fuselage, and have vast ballast tanks throughout the fuselage to allow it to fall beneath the waterline. When underwater, it would have a sea weight of 350,000 pounds, which would then lighten up to 240,000 pounds when the tanks were empty. It would be able to carry around 20,000 pounds of nuclear-tipped weapons, 24 in total, that would be deployed with parachutes over the target area, giving time for the jet to escape and for the bomb to securely reach its target location. Remember, this is the early 1960s and self-guided missiles were still an emerging technology. Its golden colour scheme, which you might have noticed is hardly stealthy, like a submarine, is to help prevent the plane ripping itself apart at top speeds. Perhaps a different, darker colour would have been developed, but alas, we don't know for sure. And let's talk about that speed. The jet would actually suck in water, boil it, and then eject it as steam. And I'll get to why this technology is shockingly terrible later, but this would give it a proposed speed of 100 knots underwater. This engine would be based off a special research project that looked at underwater hydrojets for torpedoes. And it's possible that the production model of this aircraft would have had a top speed up to 250 knots. While in the air, it was a completely different story. Remember how it had that full ballast tank? That would be its fuel. 
The pressurized water would be pushed past the 3,600 megawatt reactor, vaporizing almost instantly and essentially turning into rocket thrust. It would allow the aircraft to get up to speeds of Mach 3 to Mach 4, flying low over the surface as to avoid radar. We unfortunately don't have any range information on this aircraft, but we do know that technically, where there was water and air, there was fuel for the ramjet. The aircraft's mission would only be limited by the food of the crew on board. And this is how its mission would work. The submersible nuclear ramjet mission would be one of a quick retaliatory strike. It would be used for operations which had little or no warning, or for when the powers that deemed a deadly first strike. The crew of nine would start their deployment by being subtly located near the territory of an enemy nation, submerged under the sea, sitting quiet. The mission profile was long and would have employed life support systems designed for the space missions. When the code red was given, the team would spring into action and pressurize the ballast tanks. These tanks would be slowly heated by the nuclear reactor, forming steam. This would then simultaneously start to be released by the aircraft and it would rise from the ocean floor. The water would be vaporized and the jet would launch from the sea like a submarine nuclear missile today. As the aircraft rose to the sky, it would tilt over until it was facing forward and screen towards the combat zone low to the ground. The ramjet would slowly switch from water to air as the reaction mass and increase up to around Mach 4. Upon reaching the target area, the nuclear weapon would be deployed via a parachute from the top of the plane as it soared overhead, as to not impact the ramjet inlets. The nuclear bomb would slowly come to a rest on the ground before detonating. The jet, now presumably outrunning the blast and reaching safer open water, would throttle down its ramjet. It would pull into a vertical climb and then deploy special drag brakes. This would stall the aircraft and it would start to fall almost vertically tail first. Before it hit the water, however, it would use rocket jets for a rough final deacceleration, much like the SpaceX rockets that we see today. Once in the water, it would refill its tanks and descend under the waves. So if this was so incredible, whatever happened to the design? There are so many flaws with this concept that it can be hard to choose where to begin. Let's talk about the engine. This concept of a nuclear ramjet ejecting water and air all over the place would be a radiation nightmare. It would pollute the sea, the atmosphere, and leave a very clear trail as to where the submarine ended up. Clearly the designers thought that no one would follow it, or at least hope that the enemy would be utterly defeated until there would be any sort of retaliation. Plus, the crew themselves would be on board what can only be summed up as a radiation death trap. The shielding for the reactor wouldn't be enough and spending months cooped up next to a reactor of that size was not a good idea. And if to add insult to injury, when the mission was complete, where would this submarine go? Would the submarine plane simply cruise around into a port and say hello, flooding the local and presumably friendly waterways with radiation? I think not. It would also be loud as heck. Like underwater, it would be the loudest thing in the world and those in the Atlantic could easily hear it operating in the Pacific. There is no way it could hide when cruising around underwater and even more visible when it was flying. It was not understood how this would exactly be stealthy. You might also realize that this concept sounds very similar to a later one. Project Pluto, which envisioned a flying nuclear cruise missile that once completed would dive into the deepest part of the ocean, the Marianas Trench, to protect the world from the radiation of its engine. But as Scott from Aerospace Projects Review said in his original article on this topic, the crew are very unlikely to want to sign up to a one-way trip to the darkest and deepest part of the world. By 1964, nuclear ICBMs were proved to be far more reliable, accurate, harder to stop, and didn't have pesky crew on board who might have had morals about attacking enemy cities with 24 nuclear weapons after spending long months underwater. The project was sunk, well, as far as we know, on the USA side. 
But who's to say what insane technology the Russians have been working on? But that's a video for another time. Special thanks to Scott from Aerospace Projects Review. He has a new book out all about the hidden top secret development of the SR-71, and I suggest you jump onto Amazon to check it out. Link in the description. For more designs that never saw the light of day, go to his website here to see how incredible these planes and other aerospace projects were. And if you want to check out something else cool, then head over to Aviation Station, my new more casual news channel on the aviation industry. I have a whole slew of great content there ready for you to see and would love to have you subscribe. Lastly, a very special thank you to my Patreons that without their help and financial support have made this video possible. If you want to join, the link is down below. Thank you so much for watching.